Welcome to AP Environmental Science. In this video, we are going to talk a little bit about photochemical smog, which is one of the two main types of smog. The main cause of photochemical smog is the combustion of fossil fuels. Now this process of combustion of fossil fuels, not only does it release carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, but it also releases nitrogen oxides and volatile organic hydrocarbons, or VOCs. Now these nitrogen oxides and VOCs are going to react with heat and sunlight in order to create secondary air pollutants. And those secondary pollutants that create this smog, those are ozone and peroxyacyl nitrates, or PANs. Now remember those VOCs, volatile organic hydrocarbons, those are any kind of substance that's going to evaporate or sublimate when it's at room temperature. So these VOCs can be both naturally occurring or anthropogenic. So something that would be anthropogenic would be gasoline. That is a VOC. So if you've ever seen a pool of gasoline or a container with gas without the lid on it, you can actually see that gas sublimating and evaporating when it's at room temperature. Another source of VOCs is actually from certain types of trees, and they release a VOC called isoprene. Now, these VOCs, or isoprene, that is actually what makes the Blue Ridge Mountains and the Smoky Mountains look a little hazy, because those VOCs from the trees are reacting with heat and sunlight to create a little bit of smog, and that smog is what makes the forest look a little hazy hazy and gives it that characteristic smokiness to the Smoky Mountains. Now you need to know the overall equation that creates photochemical smog, and that's the big equation at the top of the screen here. So what's happening here is that nitrogen oxides from burning fossil fuels or from some natural sources and the VOCs are both going to go through a series of chemical reactions along with that sunlight as a catalyst and that is going to produce the ozone and the pans or the photochemical oxidants. Now you again need to know ozone is a secondary air pollutant whereas the nitrogen oxides and the VOCs that is a primary air pollutant. Additionally Ozone is one of the six criteria air pollutants that is regulated by the EPA. So we are making conscious efforts as a country to try to reduce the impact of this smog. Now there are several factors that influence when and where this photochemical smog is produced. The first factor would be timing. Nitrogen oxide is released primarily early in the day. And if you think about this, it makes sense because it comes from the combustion of fossil fuels and a lot of people are on the road in the morning driving to work. So we're having this large release of nitrogen oxides in the morning. Now that process to turn that nitrogen oxide into ozone takes a little bit of time and it requires sunlight. So our ozone concentrations, which on this graph are the oxidants, those are going to peak in the afternoon once we've got an increased sun intensity and the temperatures have warmed up a little bit. So on this graph, you can see early in the morning during rush hour, we see an increase in our nitrogen oxides. And in the afternoon, once it starts to get warmer and sunny, that's when we see an increase in our ozone. Additionally, Photochemical smog is influenced by location and season. So places where it is going to be sunny and have warm climates, those places are going to be more likely to have photochemical smog formation. Now photochemical smog is also referred to as LA fog because LA smog or photochemical smog was first really observed and documented in the Los Angeles basin. Photochemical smog does impact human health. It irritates the eyes, nose, and throat, which makes sense because those are very sensitive tissues that are exposed directly to the atmosphere. 
And having this smog and these chemicals interact with your body systems, that can worsen any existing heart and lung conditions and long-term exposure to air pollution in general, particularly photochemical smog, that can lead to lung cancer. Because again, your lungs are interacting pretty closely with the air that's coming into your body to do that transfer to get that oxygen into your bloodstream. Now, if there's any kind of pollutant, that's going to also be going deep into your lungs into that gas exchange tissue. But there's hope. This is not all bad news. There are ways to reduce photochemical smog. And it's pretty straightforward. The first thing is to reduce nitrogen oxides, one of the ingredients. The second thing is to reduce the VOCs, so the other ingredient, which makes sense, right? And there's a few ways that we do this. To reduce the nitrogen oxides, we can use what are called catalytic converters on cars. Now, catalytic conversions we'll see on some older cars that were designed to reduce the exhaust gases. So it's converting that nitrogen oxides in the exhaust into oxygen and nitrogen gas. So what happens is a series of reactions take place inside of that catalytic converter. And this is enabling those cars to reduce the amount of pollutants that are being emitted from the tailpipe. We can also reduce VOCs. And one way to do that is to pump your gas at night when the temperatures are colder. Now, this is not saying that you have to only get gas at night and being in a dark area magically makes things better. Pumping gas at night just means that the chance of the VOCs in that gasoline evaporating is reduced a little bit. Also, make sure that you are following all gasoline refueling instructions. So making sure that the nozzle is fully inserted into the gas tank. If it has a vapor recovery nozzle, that it, that is being used properly. Being careful not to spill gas. And when you are done fueling your vehicle, to make sure that the gas cap is screwed on tightly. Smog is an issue in more places than just in the city. Now remember, air pollution does not stay in one place. The global atmosphere is a global commons, and what happens in one place will spread to another. And we've talked a little bit about smog in some of California's national parks in past videos, but I want to reiterate how this smog is impacting places such as Sequoia Kings Canyon and Yosemite National Parks. These are both not too far away from major cities and urban areas in California. So what happens is smog that develops in the Los Angeles and San Francisco basins, that gets blown inland towards the mountains where these parks are. And if you look at the views from the parks in this particular picture, those were taken from the same location just on different days and each day had a different amount of sea breeze blowing that pollution inland to the park. So we've seen some significant declines in visibility in national parks as a result of air pollution in the urban areas many miles away. Now in summary, you should be able to describe how photochemical smog forms and some of the factors that influence that formation. You should be able to explain some of the health effects of inhaling photochemical smog and be able to describe a little bit of the methods that you can do to reduce photochemical smog. Now again, I want you to take note, not all smog is going to be photochemical smog. Photochemical smog is that Los Angeles type smog. The other type of smog would be London smog or classic smog. And I put a table here in the bottom of this slide that you can put into your notes to compare the two. And just keep in mind, they are totally different chemically and they have different impacts on the environment and humans. Please leave me your questions here at the end. And I hope that as you watch this video, you were able to learn something.